Hey everyone, Reflected here. Today I'd like to show you how a campaign is made through the example of Paradise Lost, my recently released Huey campaign. I've been asked this question many times so I thought it's time to make a video about it. I hope you'll find it interesting. The first step is selecting an aircraft and a map. Since you're looking at six months of work or maybe even a year or more you need to pick a module you're passionate about. For example, I think the Hind is cool, but I know next to nothing about it, and I know I wouldn't be motivated enough to put in this insane amount of work into the project. Motivation is key. I always make these campaigns mainly for myself, because I love a given module or era of aviation history so much that I want to create a realistic environment where I can relive those events. It's like when I was a kid and I built uh, complete cities out of Lego, or a pirate island, or a Jurassic Park. A pile of bricks was turned into something meaningful and immersive that I could have fun with. I would keep making them if nobody ever played them. The fact that ED releases them and you guys are enjoying them is a bonus and a dream come true. You also need to look at what's available in DCS. You need to have an appropriate map and enough other aircraft and ground units so that you can put together a nice variety of missions. This was the first obstacle when I decided to make a Huey campaign. We don't have a Vietnam map and at this time ED hasn't even hinted there would be one. Once a mission is built on a map, there is no way to swap it, so you need to think carefully. Since we got the Marianas map with palm trees and everything, it looked close enough so I decided to go for a bit of an alternate history to accommodate my campaign. Alternatively, if you have a similar enough map, you can use it as a stand-in. Guam is a small island, it would never pass for Vietnam, but the Caucasus map is quite similar to Korea, so that worked quite well in Hunters Over the Yalu, my F-86 Sabre campaign. Once you have a rough idea about what your campaign is gonna look like, you can begin the most important part, research. You need to know every rivet on the module you're working with. And not only that, how they were used, what roles, down to every single procedure, departures, routes, combat use, communications, everything. You can't just make stuff up unless absolutely necessary. Even with campaigns like Wolfpack that were made based on original combat reports, there are many details not covered in those reports that I had to figure out. Campaigns that have a completely fictional story, like Fear the Bones, are still 95% realistic procedures based on research and only 5% fiction. The best way is to read books on the subject, preferably memoirs of pilots who flew the aircraft. Before even opening the mission editor, I read at least six books written by helicopter pilots who flew uh, the Huey in Vietnam. Or should I say, I listened to them. I have a subscription to Audible, which is a great audiobook app. As I listen to the books, I take notes every time the writer drops some info about a procedure, an interesting event, a mission detail, or just a radio conversation. It's a different language entirely that is not easy to get right for us outsiders. After having read all these books, I had pages and pages of notes and enough pieces of the jigsaw so that I could see more or less what a Huey mission over Vietnam looked like. I also had plenty of interesting events, tasks and mission ideas so I could move on to the next phase. I grouped all these ideas into missions and the missions into a storyline. Decide how many missions you want, write a list, assign dates to them, and write down in a sentence what will happen in each mission. The main task and the twists and surprises. I always use an Excel file for this. Before starting to build each mission separately, think about what they will all have in common. I figured out where all the fire support bases will be, company HQ, the hospital and so on. Then I opened the map and started populating them with units, just like populating Anderson Air Force Base 2. Once you're happy with everything, you can save these as templates. It 
it's much easier to delete the stuff that you don't need in a mission than to populate everything from scratch every time. Another good example is the flag batteries on the Channel and Normandy maps. Now it's time to dive into each mission. Before I start working in the mission editor, I write the script in an Excel file. Every radio transmission that will be heard in the mission. Putting the lines of each character in a different column. It's like writing the script of a movie. If you read it, you should have a detailed idea of what will happen. When I have all the lines and I can see the entire movie in my head, it's time to set it all up in the mission editor. I know what events should happen and when, I just have to translate the what and the when to DCS language. Each event has at least one line of triggers. A trigger is like uh, an if function in Excel. If a certain condition or conditions are met, then this and that should happen. The DCS editor is brilliant. There is such a wide variety of conditions and events that almost nothing is impossible. You just need to find the best way and prepare for all the what ifs. Should it happen when the player enters a zone? But what if he flies using a different route? Maybe two minutes after a previous event? How do you know how fast the player will fly? Or should the trigger fire when someone is dead or damaged? What if that doesn't happen? Or when the player is flying above a certain altitude or below a certain airspeed? Or maybe you want to tie the action to a switch that is flicked in the cockpit? Anything is possible. You just have to be creative. The hard part is to make these triggers fail safe. 100 players will fly the mission in 110 different ways. And you need to make sure that the triggers fire with enough leeway. Of course, if the player ignores the briefing completely and starts flying in the opposite direction, you can't help that. This is by far the hardest part and one of the most exhausting one and this is what makes the difference between a great user experience and frustration. The more surely and accurately you can predict the events, the more complex stuff you can set up. A uh, do whatever you want kind of mission can never be a fun scripted one. That's why dynamic campaigns will never replace good scripted ones. Once I've set up and played every mission a hundred times and I'm happy with them, the triggers fire, there's enough action, they have a nice rhythm and so on, I can consider the script final. Time to send it to the voice actors. My campaigns would not be possible without helpful members of the DCS community who volunteer to record hundreds of lines in their free time. I can't thank them enough for their help. So I send them the Excel file, they record the lines and send them back to me. As I receive the raw files, I need to process them to make them sound like they are heard over the radio, or being shouted over engine noise, or set in a briefing room, whatever the situation requires. I usually look for original recordings on YouTube, then download the audio and try to grab as many static noises as possible then I create a template from those layers in Sony Vegas. Each voiceover contains several layers of statics, clicks and background noises. If you get a message from another helo, the noise of the blades should be heard behind the speech. Crown, this is Blackjack 2-1 on blue. Do you copy? Over. Or conversations in the background if it's coming from a ground station. Roger 2-1, we need a dust off in your area. Advise when ready to copy shackles or gunfire if you're talking to the grunts. Blackjack 2-1, this is Victor 1 Delta, receiving you Lima Charlie. Getting these effects right can add a lot to the atmosphere of the campaign. So I import each raw file, render them as an OGG file, then set them up in game. Each trigger that used to be a simple subtitle now gets a sound file too. I carefully space them apart so that the flow of the conversations feel natural and then test the missions again to see how they feel. This is my favorite part. Until now, these movies or stories only existed in my head and now the missions have come alive. You hear real people speak with real emotions in their voices. It's so rewarding. With this, the missions should be finished but they never are. As I play and test them again and again, I always have new ideas.
You know, as they say, art is never finished, only abandoned. But let's say, for argument's sake, the missions are done. There's still a lot of work to do. Briefing images, kneeboard pages, documentation. You need to figure out what kind of information you want to put on these pages and in what format. What did it look like back then? If you don't know, what's your best guess that will feel period correct? Should it all be written on chalkboard? Or typewritten on a piece of paper? Once you have everything, you need to put these in PDFs too, so the player can have them separately, and also write up a nice campaign introduction document with everything you want the player to know. Background story, historical background, contents, gameplay advice, and so on. Bunyap is the master of these. His documentations are exceptionally well made. Then the skins. As you know, all my campaigns come with highly realistic custom skins. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of stock skins that come with the DCS modules. There are always some glaring mistakes or unrealistic colors. Your campaign can be exciting to play, but it also has to look cool and realistic. So I open the official template and make my own skins. There could be a separate video about this process. It takes ages and as much research as the campaign itself. Months of work to get the colors right, the markings accurate, the weathering nailed, and most importantly, the rough matte layers that are responsible for uh, you know, the glossy and flat surfaces, metallic or non-metallic. In this case, however, I already had a couple of perfect skins made by Home Fries, and I knew I could never make better ones than those. So I simply asked for his permission to use them, and he kindly agreed. By the way, he's also the voice of Colonel Kilmore in Mission 12. And then, another important part. A pinch of salt. Think about what are the little things that will make the player feel like they're there. Something typical for the story you're telling. Is it the armed forces radio blasting 60s tunes? Original radio programs played on the loudspeakers at Anderson. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. Letters from home. My dear Jack, I miss you more than words can describe. Maybe a few subtle movie or pop culture references. Charlie, don't surf! These little things make a huge difference in making the missions more immersive and put the player in the shoes of your main character. They make the difference between a good campaign and a great one. You think we're done? <laughs> Not quite yet. While testing all the missions, I take tons of screenshots and select the best 20 or 30 to go in the DCS store. These have to sell the campaign. Then I select the best one and turn it into a cover art. We all judge books by their covers, don't we? So it really has to catch the eye. An even more important part is the trailer. I'm not a very good DCS movie maker, so in order to have epic trailers fitting to the campaigns, I always work with Dominic Keller. He's incredibly talented. I tell him the storyline, what I want to see in the trailer, send him a couple of short missions set up so he can shoot the scenes that I had in mind, and then he always comes back to me with a mind-blowing result. That's it, your campaign is done. Or is it? It's probably best to send it to a few friends to test the missions. You can't possibly anticipate every player behavior, and as a mission maker, you can't not know what is supposed to be done. Once the campaign is released, you'll get even more feedback about things that don't really work as intended, or things that are not as obvious or easy as you first thought. I hate missions where I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm not the kind of player who ignores the briefings and just jumps in and expects things to work out. It's a challenging part of the project to make sure the player is always guided properly without being too patronizing and holding their hands too tight. It's a very thin line and of course there will always be some who ignore even the most in-your-face guidance and then complain. DCS is constantly being developed, updated and improved. It has come a very long way, 
so get ready to keep your missions up to date too. Your campaign may work now, but hey, now there's an update that changes the shape of the airbase you use, or the numbering of the parking spots, and everything is messed up. Or after an update, the AI can't spawn within, say, 10 feet of a ground unit, and you place them at 8 feet, because it worked back then. Or we get new clouds, so you need to set up the weather conditions once again. Or a new feature is added to the AI that completely breaks your missions because they behave differently and you have to think about workarounds. I wish that building a DCS campaign was like building a house on a rock that would stand there for centuries. But it's, uh, it feels more like this. Or this. Or this. But I guess that's just the nature of software development. Sometimes some aspect of DCS breaks, and of course that breaks the missions too. I spend a lot of time responding to user reports about AI behavior, DCS performance, and other bugs that I have zero control over because they're hard-coded within DCS. Some people give me too much credit, but I only have the same access to DCS as any of you, the mission editor. This being said, Spotting these bugs in time is important, so that a track can be forwarded to ED so they can fix it soon. They're very helpful and really supportive. Quite often, mission breaking changes are under the hood, so not mentioned in the change log. I can't possibly refly every mission of every campaign after every update, so I rely on you guys, and I appreciate these heads ups. I pride myself in keeping every mission up to date and working 100% all the time. You gave me your trust by buying the campaign, so I should hold up my end of the bargain and not let you guys down if I can help it. Still, the foundation is DCS and that's in ED's hands. Okay, that was pretty long to tell. Imagine how long it takes to actually build. Still, if there's a module that you're passionate enough about, and you have a good story to tell, get into it. Start building your own campaign, one step at a time. Eventually you'll get there and the entire community will benefit from it. I'm planning another video where I deep dive into some of the triggers and conditions that I use. Stay tuned for some campaign announcements and updates and don't forget to subscribe. See ya!